Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and in today's video, we're doing a backup camera on this 2010 Toyota Highlander. In this video, we're going to show you how to install this camera that mounts to the license plate, run the wiring through the hatch into the car to an aftermarket radio. Let's get started. Now the camera kit that we decided to go with is this license plate mountable camera kit. In the kit itself, we have a video RCA cable. Essentially here, this will take the video signal from the camera and send it all the way up to the radio. Now in line with that RCA are these little leads here, which you can use either to power the camera or as a reverse trigger wire, multiple different ways, but they run in parallel, which makes it nice and easy. Probably in our application today, we're gonna to use this to power our camera. Now it actually has a power harness itself. And finally, the camera itself. Now this camera here sits actually behind the license plate, so you can still keep your license plate frame, which is super nice. And essentially here, has two connections. Got your um, RCA connection, which carries the video, and the camera does require power. So what we're gonna do with this power is the red end, we're gonna tie into our RCA little lead here, and then we'll ground the camera with the black wire somewhere in the hatch. Then the other end will run to an accessory source back behind the radio, so that'll power the camera when the key is on, which is super nice reason why we're doing that that's going to allow us to use the camera in other situations outside of just in being in reverse now we'll also have to run a separate wire along with this video wire to the reverse light positive wire as our video trigger we don't have a trigger back behind the radio um, we don't have a smart harness that produces one so we're gonna have to run probably an eight, 18 gauge wire from that reverse light positive wire along our video wire as, to, as well, all the way up to the dash, and that'll connect into the radio's reverse trigger wire. So, without further ado, what we're gonna do is start taking the hatch apart so we can start running our wiring. We'll get our camera mounted and uh, go from that point. Now we need to take our hatch cover off. The first thing we need to do is remove this guy. Now we can pop this panel out. What that's going to do is expose a 10 millimeter bolt. Go and remove that. Before we remove the big panel here, we have to remove our side pieces and our top piece. Okay, there's that first piece. Four clips. Next, we'll remove our side pieces here. Finally, here, this big piece. Now, Besides that 10 millimeter bolt, everything else is just held on with clips. So you usually just start from a corner and start pulling. Now some of your clips may stay in there and that's fine. We can remove them out of the panel and put them back in the plastic piece before we reinstall it when we're done. All right, so here's where our license plate obviously is gonna bolt up and we need to take off this silver Highlander badge because that's gonna grant us access to the grommets to run our wiring through the hatch into the interior side of the panel. That's where we're gonna make our connections. So as we open this up, in order to get that off, we're gonna notice there's a couple of clips. There's a clip and a couple of 10 millimeter nuts all the way down that we need to remove. And that'll allow us to pop that on off to run the wiring through the back sheet metal. All right, so what we're gonna do at this point is start preparing our wiring. We have to go through this grommet so you notice there's our factory wiring, so we know that's a safe location to run our own wiring. So what we need to do is pop both ends of these grommets out, um, and uh, we're going to pass wire through our video wire through. It'll come out into here, and then we'll run it along all the way to the camera itself. So 
So what I'm going to do is I actually have this old metal hanger and we're going to use this as a kind of a fish. So first, I'm going to get this all the way through and what we're going to do is hook our wire to the end here. Just feeding our wire through here. Just careful that we don't damage the wire. So just take your time. There we go. Just like so. All right, so we pop this little guy on out. Um, there's usually a stud there, but ours is missing and broken. Um, this car is a, a Michigan car, so it was super corroded. We also removed that nut and that nut from those bolts. That one as well. And there's also one right there, but that one's so corroded that we can't get it off. And so, and then we have this, um, clip here. Now if you're able to get yours off, basically what that does, it allows this whole piece to come off and then you have a grommet there that you can run your wires through. Now unfortunately for us, we couldn't even get ours off because it was so corroded on there. Um, and so we had to just snake our wire up and it took us about an hour to do so. But what we did is we snaked that through this grommet right here. As you can see our wire coming out there and uh, how to be kind of strategic we cut the grommet just a hair so it wouldn't pinch the wire for your install there's an unused grommet right there that you can pop out and run your wires through inside of the hatch panel so use that grommet there and you can run your wires through we came out there ran our wire down so this is where our extension connects in and our power harness for the camera now remember, camera power harness has a, a, a red and a black wire. And the red wire, we just looped back in and connected into our RCA red wire. So our RCA is gonna carry both the video signal and power for the camera. And then our ground for the camera, the black wire, we ran that down here and connected it with a ring terminal to that metal post. This is the bracket for the rear windshield wiper. So this is already grounded and it's a perfect location. So where this continues, this is our video wire, which also includes the power wire built in. Goes all the way down here. We go through that access port. You saw us fish the wire through this guy. And then we're at this point where it comes on through. Now, really we're almost in the center. So you could go left or you could go right. Basically we need to go down and work our way forward. Or same thing with the other side. We'll probably go on the driver's side. And then what we need to do also is grab power for our trigger wire, which we have to run a separate wire for. But we gotta grab power off the positive wire of a reverse light. We'll run that wire all the way up to the radio as well. And that's gonna be our trigger to trigger the radio to go in reverse as soon as that light turns on. So we pulled out the reverse light bulb and stripped back the, the cover here. And essentially this bulb has two wires, a positive and a negative. Now this blue wire is going to be the positive power wire for the reverse light. And that is what we need to tap in for our trigger wire. White with a black stripe commonly on Toyotas is your ground. So we don't need that wire. We just need to tap into this blue guy. Now what we've done is we've ran our wiring down to this point. We started adding in our extra 18 gauge wire that we're gonna run along and what we did is we just taped it all the way in down to the other end of this RCA cable. So we're gonna run this cable up front and we'll fish this wire behind this panel and we're gonna connect this wire into the blue. So this white wire will see 12 volts as soon as it's put in reverse and it's this white wire that we're gonna connect into our radio's reverse trigger wire. So we gotta kinda take apart a couple of pieces here in order to get up underneath to fish that wire through and then that'll also give us the axis we need to run forward 
this wire bundle as we work our way towards the dash. All right, so we got that all soldered up. It's all done. So we'll tape that up, plug in the light, and we started running our wire down below, up and over. So we just basically, from back there, we just tucked it all the way underneath that lip there. Basically, have come out to this point. So what, we're need, what we need to do is continue to tuck it up underneath this panel. We're gonna work our way all the way down, go underneath this panel, start working our way forward. And again, like I said, I'm just tucking it right up underneath the panel. You don't need to remove the panel, just lift it enough where you can slip the wire under. We're working our way forward. Right. So we're just taking our time. We're about out to this point here. We'll keep tucking it, working our way forward. Okay, we kept tucking, 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 tucking all the way down. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Then we just went back underneath the carpet, tucked it, tucked, and we came out here. Now we'll you fish it up into the stereo cavity. Okay, so we got everything reinstalled back here. We just need to put our cover back on. All right, so we fed our backup camera up into the dash from the kick panel area. This is ready to go. Now remember, our white guy went all the way back to the reverse light positive wire. That needs to go to our purple white wire or our radio's reverse trigger wire. So what we'll do is get that connected and we're gonna crimp it in. Grab our crimpers. Great, so that's all connected. Now this red wire, remember this runs in parallel with our video wire. This goes all the way back to the camera and connects into the camera power harness red wire. So this needs to see accessory. And fortunately for us, when we installed this radio, we left out an accessory wire. And if you wanna see how we did that, check out the other video on how we disassembled the dash um, and wired up our new radio. But essentially our red wire is in parallel with the red wire in our aftermarket radio. We just teed into that. And this is going to power our camera. Just like that, crimp it on in. All right, so that is our camera, all good to go. Now at this point of time, we need to get, to get the radio back in the dash. So we're gonna grab our harnesses here. All right, so with the radio back in the dash, let's double check that our camera is turned on. So we go into our settings. We're going to select camera input. It's on normal, so it is turned on. So let's go ahead and put it in reverse. Cycle's over, great. The hatch is open, so we're looking at the ceiling, but that's okay. Back out of reverse. Awesome. And then since we wired it to accessory, if we click on camera, there we are, even without being in reverse, works great. Perfect, so let's go ahead and then continue reassembling the dash. Alright, that's about it. Now, if you want to see how we installed this aftermarket radio, we'll have a link in the description as well as a card up above that really walks you through step by step on removing the factory radio and getting a doubled in installed. This doubled in is awesome because it can accommodate a backup camera input. Let's just do a final test for you. So we'll put it in reverse. It works great. The uh, protective cover is still on it, so that's why it's a little blurry. And we're also looking at the ceiling. 
And also if we go home, go to rear camera, also works as well. So that's about it for this install. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that like button. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. We post great content on the channel all the time. We will see you in the next video.